question. Can everybody hear me, especially people who are not in the room with me? Thank you. Yes, I see. I, I hear you very well. Excellent. Thank you. And good afternoon. Is there just one of you? No. There are more than there are more than more than one. OK, good. Well, good afternoon to everybody here in the room with me and good afternoon to everybody who's joining me remotely. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to talk for a short while about how we in the UK built and have sustained our professional network in the field of university wide mathematics support. Um, so these are the sort of bullet points of things I would like to try to cover. Um, we're going to talk about professional networks that I've been associated with, and particularly the Sigma network. And if you don't know, I shall explain a little bit about what that is. I'll discuss how it was formed, how the community themselves have sustained it, and some of the many activities with which it has been involved. I also have an ideas list with examples of things we have done. And my idea is that maybe some of you will be inspired to do something similar or something that's more appropriate for your own institution or your own country. Um, I'll also uh, spend a few minutes talking about a theoretical paper for anybody who is interested in theories of community of practice and theories of networks for learning. It's not a paper that I have written, um, but it's a paper that I came across and I've found useful because it talks about the differences and similarities between a community of practice and a network for learning and also um, characteristics of a successful network. How do you know that your, your network is being successful? So those are the things I'd like to address in the next 20 minutes or so. Um, the professional work networks that I particularly know a little bit about is obviously the Sigma network, which is a network of professional people involved in mathematics and statistics support. And I'll say a bit about that, but essentially it was established in 2010 to champion the cause of university wide mathematics and statistics support and to provide developmental activities such as those we've been discussing this week um, and mentoring for those who work in the area, perhaps those who are new to the area. Uh, there's another uh, network that I'm aware of, which I'm less familiar with, which is Talmo, which is teaching and learning mathematics online. Some of you may have heard of this already, and it was established during the pandemic to help colleagues with the challenges of teaching mathematics online during the pandemic. But that does continue to run now and it runs online seminars. I, I won't say much about that because I don't know a lot about Talmo. I, I know more about the Sigma network. So let's have a look at start by looking at the, the genesis of the network, where it all began from. And those are people, those people that don't know Sigma. Sigma as a center for excellence in teaching and learning began back in 2005. Um, and it was government funded and the funding came from the government to two English universities. That was Loughborough University, where I was working and Coventry University where my handsome colleague in the photograph there, the chap on the right, Duncan Lawson, and many of you I, I know already will know Duncan. So Duncan was leading um, Sigma at Coventry and I was leading Sigma at Loughborough. And together we have championed this mathematics support work in our own institutions. The, the government gave the funding to the two universities. We, well, we, they didn't give it to us, they awarded it to us following a bidding process. We had to bid for funding and we were successful and we were successful on the basis of having mathematics support provision in our two universities for a long period of time. So Duncan's support centre in Coventry started in about 1990 and the one in Loughborough started in 1996. So you see that by the time the original funding started in 2005, we'd already been going for between um, that 50, uh, 10 and 15 years. We've got um, quite a, a long track record of doing this already. Um, and the original funding for, for Sigma, the Centre for Excellence, was for five years from 2005 to 2010. Then we secured some continuation funding for a few more years, but now 
the Centre for Excellence is not funded at all. All that funding is dried up now. So what about the Sigma network as opposed to Sigma Centre for Excellence? So we can trace part of the development to what we call the establishment of Sigma hubs in 2010 or thereabouts. Now, the Sigma hubs were concerned with dividing up England and Wales. Now, on the picture here that I'm circulating, we've got England here and this part of the country, for those of you that don't know the uh, UK geography, this part of the country in here is um, Wales. So England and uh, well, actually up to up to here is Wales as well. There's North Wales up there. Um, so the Sigma network was concerned with the two countries, England and Wales, not Scotland. So not Scotland here and not Ireland over here. They, as I'll mention later on, have their own professional networks with which we work very closely, but they do have their independent networks. So this is England and Wales. And just to help you with your geography, can you see where I'm pointing? Um, you are able to see that. The person in the room who knows most about this part of the world is Arlene, I think. Is that right? She yeah. there? Yeah. yeah, she's there because this is this is the part of the country right up on the on the northeast where Arlene comes from. And uh, it's a love for anybody who hasn't been. It's a beautiful part of the country. But sadly, I'm here in the Midlands and it's not the most beautiful part of the country. Um, and so Loughborough is round about here and Coventry is round about here. Um, so what we did was to establish uh, the Sigma network. We divided up England and Wales into these regions that you can see here. Uh, and I'll say why we did that in, on the next slide. So there were, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, six, six hub regions. Each of the hub regions had a lead university in each region. Now these were volunteers or activists or people who were really keen or very passionate about mathematics and statistics support. And they volunteered to lead the hub in their region in coordination with the, with the rest of us nationally. So each hub had a volunteer coordinator um, and the coordinator together with the contacts and I call them local activists. As I say, these are people who are very passionate about math support. Um, they, they provided the day to day face of Sigma for tutors working in the regions. And if you were in one of these regions at one of the universities, you had a, a relatively local contact who you could ask for advice. You could invite to your institution um, and, and just ask for mentoring or help. Um, just for those who don't know, within um, the United Kingdom, that's uh, England, Wales, Scotland and the North of Ireland, there's about 100, 160, 160, 160 universities. So um, I don't have the exact number that's in, in this part of the country. There's probably about uh, of the order of 100 universities in here. Uh, and each university would then have access to a local hub where they could access more help more conveniently. And a key benefit of the, um, the hub network was that travel and then costs were minimised. It was obviously much easier to travel within your region than to travel across the whole country for uh, events. So that's what the, the network started to look like. It was built with these hub regions. Uh, so I'm going to go on to talk about what the Sigma network has done now. As I said before, it was it was built to provide um, a network for people who were interested in mathematics and statistics support. Uh, very often, if you are working in mathematics and statistics support in one of our hundred plus universities, you might be the only person in that university that is doing math support. If you're lucky, there may be one or two or three of you, but maybe you might be the only person. So it's it's wonderful to have contact with somebody in a similar situation in a different university. So the first one of the first things we did, and some of you will be familiar with it, is our website. So that, that's a screenshot just from this morning. And um, you can see there's all sorts of very helpful things on there. We have links to um, external reports. Um, in my talks earlier this week, I talked about many of these government and research reports which talked about the maths problem that we were all facing. There's a Twitter feed in there and everything that's happening um, can be can be tweeted about. 
I haven't actually put anything on yet about what's been happening here this week, and perhaps I ought to do that. Um, and then there's information about the sigma near you on the right hand side. So if I'm in, in, in a if I'm in a university, say in the northeast in Yorkshire, I can click on this link here and find out what's happening in my local area. And then across the top, there's lots of resources. There are now hundreds of resources for math, for mathematics and statistics support professionals that can be found on this website. So, for example, there are guides on how to set up support centres, how to manage them, how to evaluate them, and the list goes on. There's lots and lots of resources there. Um, we have a mailing list, and the mailing list is the Sigma mailing list is one of the resources which is very, very well used. Every day, people from around, in fact, you could anywhere, anybody anywhere in the world can join this mailing list. It doesn't have to be people just in, in England and Wales, but people all around the world message every day onto the mailing list and they just ask for advice about issues they are grappling with in mathematics and statistics support. Members share resources or they mention resources that they found useful. And then there are other benefits as well because employment opportunities are mentioned. So those are just some of the some of the examples. And what I thought I'd do is just show you a couple of things that have come off the recent mailing list, just to give you a feel for what people were asking about. Um, so what's on the screen now was something, a question that was put on the mailing list back in March this year. And it concerned um, an, an, a member of staff in a support centre who wanted to know what was was there any good practice about how to communicate suspected learning special learning needs to students so this person was concerned that a student came to the drop-in center and the member of staff thought that there may be something wrong with the student in terms of a disability or a learning difficulty but didn't know how to perhaps communicate that to the student because of course the member of staff in the support centre is not a psychologist, is not a medic. They, they are not the people who can give a, diagnose, a reliable diagnosis on a problem. So they can't say to a student, we think you've got this or we think you've got that. But there is, there is a question about how you um, communicate sensitive issues like that to students. Um, and the person concerned particularly, I think, was interested in medical students because uh, as you're probably aware, there's fierce, fierce competition for medical school places. And very often students who have special learning difficulties don't want to admit that they've got them because um, they feel that they'll be disadvantaged. Um, but nevertheless, if they don't admit to having a problem, then later on in their course, they may find they're having particular difficulties which can escalate the problems they're having. So, I mean, I don't know what the answer to this question is, but there were plenty of responses from other people on the website offering advice sympathetic and helpful responses so that was one example of where somebody who's quite isolated can ask for help and the whole community can uh, contribute to responses a completely different one um, a different person in march also said um, for example i'd like to hear from people who are using our commander I don't know what R Commander is. Some people here might do. I know it's a graphical user interface for using the R statistics program. Um, but this person was asking for advice on whether the um, whether it would work, whether there are drawbacks and so on. So this is an example of how in real time members of staff can get almost instant valuable information from their colleagues. Really anywhere in the world who, who want to respond and people do. We, we find that if you uh, look at the responses within within minutes of, of posting a question, there are usually several helpful responses. So we found the mailing list really useful. The other thing that we found really useful in the Sigma network was what we call special interest groups, because subsets of people within the community have particular special interests. And there was an opportunity some years back for people to say, um, we think it would be a good idea to have a special interest group, a subset, just focusing on certain things. And uh, in the end, what happened was four special interest groups were established. And you can see what they were established in here. Statistics support, because statistics support has its own particular challenges. Um, there was a group of staff interested in employability, um, graduate skills, 
uh, employers, numeracy tests, uh, those sorts of things. Um, we've talked about special learning differences already, and there's a group of staff interested in accessibility, supporting blind students, supporting deaf students, supporting students with, with physical and uh, physical disabilities and uh, learning difficulties. And then there was a, a special interest group on evaluation and impact. And each of these special interest groups publishes their own reports and produces resources for anybody else. Now, one of the interesting things you might ask yourself this afternoon is, would it be appropriate for you within your developing network to have some special interest groups? And what would they be? Presumably they may, presumably they may be very well, may very well be different from these here. But what would you have in your special interest groups if you had any at all? Um, I'll, look, I'll just mention Telmo again very briefly. That's teaching and learning mathematics online. Uh, and people in the room and remotely will be aware that ChatGPT is dominating all the headlines now and is generating a lot of headaches for universities uh, because nobody really knows the answer and the way forward and how we deal with this. But um, for those who are interested, Telmo is having a forthcoming seminar on this topic and some of you may be interested in following that up by visiting the Talmo website. Uh, still sticking with ideas, we have a quarterly e-newsletter. Um, it's informal. It might sometimes contain just bits of information about members and what they've been up to, events that might be taking place. Uh, within the newsletter, I shall probably write a paragraph about what we've been doing this week here and just to let people know what's going on in the UK and in the rest of the world. And then we also have a more formal journal. Um, it's a light touch journal called MSOR Connections. That's Mathematics, Statistics and Operational Research Connections. It's a professional publication. It's what we call light touch, which would mean that the reviewing process is very supportive. It's not a it's not a journal in a sense of a highbrow academic journal that wants to reject papers. It wants to accept papers. Um, so the the idea would be provided it's a, a, rele um, a relevant and serious article. Um, you'd be encouraged to submit it. And many of us over the over many years have submitted articles to MSOR connections and it may be just three or four pages. It doesn't have to be a big piece of research. It may be just some information about what you've been doing in your support centre, if some evaluation, some ideas. So that's something that some of you, if you are not already aware of it, might want to have a look at. If you Google MSOR connections, you'll find a website with back copies. Um, within um, a separate website, um, there's a separate website which is called Math Centre. Some of you will have seen this before. It's been going around. It's been around since about 2005 now. We developed it as part of the original Sigma project. A Math Centre provides resources primarily for students to help them. And the idea was it would be like a virtual mathematics support centre. Students can drop in and ask for help or look for help leaflets, videos and other resources. Uh, and I'm particularly showing this page because part of the Math Centre project is what we call uh, the community project, communities here. And the community is academic staff who have developed some resources of their own. It might be a PDF, it might be a video, it might maybe some computer based assessment, lots of resources. Members of staff who want to donate their resources so that anybody can use them, can contribute them to the Math Centre community project. And maybe that's something that if you're not already doing, you, you may want to facilitate it so that your members can do something similar. Again, to uh, decrease isolation and to help people who are struggling on their own, um, we have virtual coffee mornings and people can drop in at these advertised times, bring their own coffee. There's a Blackboard link, no special tools needed. Nobody feels, nobody should feel isolated because you can join with your coffee and just sit and listen to a conversation. You don't have to join in, but if you want to join in, you can do it. You can raise particular issues there about the problems you're having in your support centre or just chat. Just have a nice chat with other people in other universities who are doing a similar job to you. Um, um, yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk just for a few minutes about uh, this 
theoretical piece of research. Now, this is a, a piece of research that I came across that is, is not it's not my research, but it, it comes from a paper called Communities of Practice and Networks, reviewing two perspectives on social learning by two authors called Cummings and Van Zee. And I can provide more details of the reference for anybody who wants it. But what this paper is concerned with is what is meant by a community of practice and what is meant by a professional network? And are they the same? And we find in the literature often these phrases, community of practice and professional network are used interchangeably. So it's a bit, it, it can be very confusing. Now, these authors argue that communities of practice and networks exist on a spectrum. And you perhaps have communities of practice being less informal on one side of the, of the spectrum. So you could have a community of practice of hairdressers or a community of practice of shoemakers or, or whatever. But at the other extreme, uh, they argue that you can have a professional network which is perhaps more formalized. It might have a constitution. It might have an advisory board. Uh, it might produce reports. So uh, there's a whole spectrum of how you might want your uh, network to operate from just being a community of people, like minded people to something much more formal. Uh, and that's a decision for you. But one of the advantages that I found of this paper um, was that they um, started to articulate all the different components of a community of practice and a network. And I just listed some of them there. Um, they talk about the different components of the community, information, knowledge sharing, very importantly, I think the social side of it, the organisational side, and then they talk about what's being shared. I won't read out, read out all the terms in there. You can see those for yourself, but they they argue about um, what what knowledge can be shared within a community and um, the results of sharing it. Now, what I did on the next slide, I took this template which came from the paper that I referred to, and I started to just think about what was happening within, within the Sigma network. So this is a bit more focused on the math support network now. So I was trying to think this, I, I started to write this into a paper, but I haven't finished it yet, but maybe one day I will finish it. Um, I was um, trying to analyze the Sigma network in terms of these different components. So in terms of the information component, um, on the right hand side, I've already mentioned that we, we have government reports, research reports, guides, learning resources. I've mentioned we have the Math Centre site, which is like a virtual math support centre for students. And then there's also a site we've, we have called Stats Tutor, which is a statistics site for, for students' resources. Um, so I was trying to sort of get my head around all the different characteristics of a network. Um, the second uh, series of boxes down are concerned with knowledge sharing. So what do we do? Well, we um, as I've already said, members can seek advice on a range of issues, either by using the coffee morning or by using the chat uh, or the email. Um, and as I said before, helpful responses usually appear within a few minutes. Then there's the social component, which, I, as I say, I think is very important because lots of people in mathematics support can feel isolated. We have new, the newsletter where the newsletter is not particularly formal and it might be just giving in some information that's interesting about some of our members. Um, we offer pro we, we have in the past offered prizes, annual prizes in mathematics support. So there would be a Sigma prize for a, a long standing member of the math support community for something they've done. Or there might be a prize for a, a new and up and up and coming person, a young person or a person new to the field that was particularly inspiring and doing something useful. So there's prizes. So there's all those things that we were doing. The organisational component. Well, the uh, Sigma network now has a committee. It has a treasurer, it mm -hmm. has a secretary, it's various people with responsibilities for managing the website, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's an annual general meeting and there's an annual conference. So those are the, those are the things that I was trying to put into those boxes. Um, Leave that for now. Very benefits of the networks, and I, I just picked out some of them which came from the paper. Obviously, there's potential for collaborative work. 
And if we look back at the Sigma network over the past decade, you'll find that there's lots of examples where people from different institutions have found a like-minded person within that community to have a project with. So the potential for collaborative work is really good. And if you actually post something to the site and say, I'm interested in do doing some collaborative work in a particular area, you will find that some people will respond and you may be able to build partnerships for specific projects. Um, there are a lot of training opportunities. That there are regular training opportunities available, training opportunities in how to use software, training opportunities in how to deal with problematic students, an enormous spectrum. One thing that is particularly important, I think, is the one that I've highlighted in the middle there, helping individuals build their professional identities. Again, if you're just on your own and that's the way you spend your professional life, it can be quite isolating. But knowing that you're part of a community of other people doing a similar sort of work can give you a much more definite identity in the work that you're doing. And we found also that some people use the fact that they're associated with this network to help in make their own cases for promotion. So, for example, somebody who's working in math support who then wants to try to get promoted or another job can then say, well, I'm part of this community as a national community. I contribute to this national community and that gives them some advantage perhaps in job applications. Um, it goes without saying that I think if we all work together, we can upgrade the whole performance. But the last point, I think, is one that's down the line for the future. But I think if you've got a network that's working well, then in the future, it's possible to use the voice of that network to try to have campaigns, to perhaps campaign to the government or to various other bodies to try to influence higher education policy. And we, we've done that to a certain extent. We found that people within our community have been able to join national advisory boards, for example. And when they join a national advisory board, they can give the voice of our community. Instead of just coming from one person or one university, it, they can speak for the, the, the community. So I think that's very valuable as well. And I think that's probably where, where I shall leave my thoughts about the network. And Hopefully, I'll inspire some of you to think about what you might do for your own network. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Tony, for this uh, very uh, informative and uh, useful presentation. Uh, I think there is a lot of things to think about, to reflect, uh, what is especially from uh, the point of view of uh, looking at the different aspects uh, of the network and uh, what uh, we can take into account or we should. Uh, so um, uh, for the collaboration purposes, uh, I have created a document uh, on the shared uh, Google Drive that is, no, uh, Zuska created the document, sorry. I've contributed to the document and that is called Wednesday S7. Uh, and uh, its title is Network Building. So please uh, have a look there. And uh, it's a place where uh, uh, you can write your ideas about the future network. And uh, we can uh, uh, take into account various questions uh, from uh, uh, what uh, could be a purpose, what could be the benefits, uh, how we can do the things, what kind of activities and so on. First of all, yes, we also have uh, guests that are uh, that are connected uh, remotely. So uh, probably we can start a discussion with uh, uh, having a questions to the Tony's presentation. So if there are any questions or comments, uh, this is a good place and good time to ask them. Yes, Itlana? Um, you mentioned that you started to, to write a paper uh, which would uh, analyze the Mm, correspondence or differences or what you want to actually 
identify between the professional networks and uh, the communities of practice. Uh, so uh, I was wondering what kind of practical use do you see once they are identified? I think one of the advantages is just is just to perhaps give you ideas. I mean, I, it hadn't occurred to me that that we could use the network. It was going on informally, but it hadn't occurred to me that we could use the network officially as a policy influencing body. Um, because at one level, I was just thinking this is to support students and staff supporting students. But I think when we started to look at uh, the big picture, you think, well, actually, we might be able to use this for more than its, more than its original purpose to influence policy with government or influence policy within your, your own university. Because within your university, you might be able to say um, the national network of support centres is now doing this, this and this. Should we not be considering doing this in our university? drawing upon that. So do you mean that uh, at, the, at the moment the Sigma is more powerful with respect to those who are using this as, I mean, the students community and so forth, mm -hmm. but you want it to be extended to the uh, policy makers so that they also... I, I, I think when the opportunity arises, if, for example, there's a, there's a consultation nationally on some aspect of education, mm -hmm. um, then a network like this can legitimately put forward a, an argument much more powerfully than just you or me on our own. Because we can say we're speaking for all these support centres in all these universities. I think so it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a thought. I mean, it's not proven yet. This is for down the line. But I think if you've got a strong body and it's, it's going to be much more credible than you on your own or me on my own. Thank you. Do you have other networks? I mean, teacher networks or mathematicians networks? There, there are networks that I'm not involved mm -hmm. with for um, applied mathematics or pure math. There are mathematicians networks. Mathematicians yes. networks. Yes. And statist mm -hmm. statisticians, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not familiar with those particularly. But they are more into the science than to education. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, would there be any questions? Would you have any questions uh, from our colleagues who uh, are joined remotely? And if you do, then you need to unmute. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, I perhaps have a question. Uh, if you would, if you would be so kind and uh, uh, describe more closely how how uh, the uh, the respective hub, hubs function, because actually Czechia is. Uh, uh, six times smaller than than England and Wales, and it seems in that if we want to uh, we want to build a network in Czechia, we should perhaps keep in mind the uh, how big we are. So so we are we are perhaps as big as one of the hubs. So <laughs> yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, I mean, they they function. Yeah, particularly in the early days, by running an event, say uh, say say an event like this, but just over one day or one afternoon, and inviting inviting representatives from the universities in that region to come along, and because it's geographically relatively close, it's um, you're not travelling across the whole the whole of England. Um, people would people could visit relatively easily, maybe just for an afternoon. Um, there was also sort of the, it was the face of mathematics support. So if, if you were setting up a new center, if, if somebody in a university wanted to set up a new center and they wanted to know who can I talk to fairly locally who has done this, I can email you, I can invite you to come to my institution to have a look at what, what we plan to do and vice versa. Um, so it worked, it worked like that. It was, it was like the, it was like the face 
of sigma locally is how it worked. But but main, mainly a training event or just a personal contact for some mentoring or some advice. I'm not saying it it did it wasn't without problems and and it rely it relies upon having somebody who is prepared to volunteer to do that role. What am I doing? Stopping sharing. Stopping sharing. Do you want me to stop sharing? Uh -huh. I thought it was just because. Don't. Oh, I see. So you couldn't see me, but now you can see. No. Oh, right. <laughs> right. OK, so, so it, it, it very much depends upon having um, a person there who is prepared to. Who is willing to talk to people in other universities and obviously not everybody is is willing to do that and lots lots of institutions don't necessarily want you to do that your your senior management might say yeah, what are you giving away all our ideas all our ideas to other universities for they're our competitors we don't want this but we all we, we our, the philosophy in sigma was to share and to collaborate and, and i think they, and i think that's what's made it work because people were willing to do that yeah thank you very much yeah exactly uh, Answered at least partly answered your question. Yeah, it did. Thank you. Yes, uh, for me it was interesting to hear about uh, the spectrum between the community of practice and a, a professional network. So, um, uh, could you uh, somehow uh, describe uh, the evolution of uh, Sigma? on the with respect to the spectrum like for example like uh, on a simple graph like this yeah i think when the sigma network first started there was no um the, there was no group of people apart from duncan lawson and myself who were sort of in charge and running it um but as it evolved various individuals started to show a lot of initiative and enthusiasm um, and over the years when when the original sigma funding ceased and it became necessary to run the network on a voluntary basis various people and some of them some of you will remember a, a gentleman called david bowers and i think he's probably been to norway i don't know if he's been here has he been here as well uh, david bowers was one of the people who was very, very uh, active and very instrumental in trying to professionalize, if you like, the network and make it more more of a network than a community. So we probably started as more of an informal community, but, but David was the person who said we must have a uh, constitution. And we must have various officers um, with responsibility for doing things. And I think that was part of the sustainability agenda because Duncan and myself were moving away from that because we've done this for several years and he what he wants to say if David Bowers suggested that if we had a constitution people knew what the organization was trying to do um, and then there were various roles for various officers and people could offer their services for these various roles and then every year at an annual general meeting this um, constitution could be reviewed and the role of the network could be reviewed and um, that's happened um, over the last few years. We didn't have an annual general meeting, for example, in the first five, five or, ten or so years. It just wasn't. It wasn't how we operated. So we, we sort of steered it from the top, if you like. But then, as as it's evolved, and you're asking about the evolution of it, as it's evolved, it's become probably more democratic um, with with an annual general meeting. Um, I think that's probably all I can say, Joseph, about the evolution of it. Yeah, thank you. That, that's a great answer. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so uh, I am aware that there are uh, also other guests that are uh, connected remotely. Uh, I've tried to share a link to the uh, document on Google Drive. So please check if uh, if you manage to access it. Uh, if you do, 
uh, it is uh, possible and uh, most welcome if you uh, can uh, pose your questions, uh, comments and suggestions uh, to this document because uh, that is it is uh, it will valuable for us uh, for everybody for us as a community let's start with the community uh, to have the contribution from as most uh, friends interested as possible may you suggest that the remote participants switch on the screen and present themselves in a few words as we did in the beginning of this meeting so that we know better who is behind the screen? Oh, good. That, that is a great suggestion. So, what do you think about it? <laughs> Let, let's start with Honza because uh, we already see him on the screen. Yeah, it's no problem for me because you have already seen and heard me. So, uh, hello everybody in Zlin. Uh, my name is Jan. I'm from the Technical University of Ostrava, running uh, the support center for nearly seven years and uh, uh, I would be happy to have some uh, some collaborative network or community. Uh, I think that in in many ways we already started the community on on a friendly basis because mo uh, some of us already met Seven years ago in Christiansen, and we we uh, we shared the, the same experience that the idea of support center is uh, can live also in Czechia, and all of us try to do our best in in implementation of the support centers in in our university setting, and uh, I think we we have a lot of experiences that we can share and build on. So thank you, Joy, for organizing this event. Uh, thank you very much for introducing uh, yourself. Uh, I think that it would also be good if we who are here at the room would then introduce ourselves so that the remote participants know who we are. <laughs> Yes, this is a good idea, but do we need to connect ourselves? No, I don't think it, it is necessary, but we can just uh, go around the table and maybe I can like uh, move the uh, camera a bit so that uh, the person who is speaking is visible. <laughs> but, but we can start with you. And I think we can talk for for institution. Let's say that we are okay. here some some institutions. Well, uh, hello, I'm Susanna. Uh, I'm from Thomas Bata uh, University in Slin, and uh, I'm also the leader of our support center. A part of that, I teach uh, first year students um, basic courses with analysis. And uh, from Slin, we are here. Three of us it's me, Jana, Harry, Amia, <laughs> uh, well, uh, next could be Marketa from Masagrik University. Hello, my name is Marketa Matulova. I'm representing team from the Masaryk University together with Martin Kvata and Marienka uh, Kralova and uh, Tereska Hodashova Cherna, who's already left. So we are like uh, running uh, the first support center in the Czech Republic, but uh, our support center is just now going through some maybe transformation. So we'll see what what the future brings us. And I, I would say that I personally think that uh, having some network would be very beneficial. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, will we continue okay. with the University of Agden? Yes. Do you want to take this one? No, 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 just I will just uh, okay. you to, so that they can see you. OK, good. So uh, my name is uh, Svetlana. This is Yuri. This is Yule. This is Martin. And we are coming from the University. Some uh, of us from Christian Sun, some of us uh, from Grimstad. Maybe I'm the only one from Grimstad. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, yeah, uh, our um, uh, the drop in center support center exists uh, since 2015. Um, and uh, we have uh, a little bit different experience from Czech Republic, so we can also share our experiences. Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Joy, you okay. for... uh, My name is Josef Rabenda and uh, I'm uh, the manager of the drop-in or support center at the Brno University of Technology. Uh, from our team, there is also uh, Gabriela here, and uh, we had also Eva, uh, who uh, unfortunately had to leave earlier today. Uh, our support center uh, or our service is uh, pretty young, maybe the youngest uh, of all here. We started in uh, the fall 2021 and uh, collected some experience since then. Uh, which uh, we are, um, are ready or, and able to share, but we also seek for inspiration because uh, our support service is uh, really small in size, although we have uh, student cohorts uh, large in size. So uh, we, we have uh, some uh, challenges and we would like to seek inspiration in uh, such uh, say a community or or net later maybe in uh, the network yes thank you and uh, the last institution here is the uh, university tromso yes we are the arctic university of and we cover an area about the same size as England, <laughs> <laughs> several campuses, and uh, because of this, all these campuses, we are doing support online. We are trying to do support online using Discord uh, this year, um, with some success, I would say. But we will uh, expand it uh, for the next years. Maybe my colleague Ali can tell something about the university. Yes, yes, we um, the Arctic University, uh, we are teaching similar students groups over several spread, campus spread over several hundred kilometers. And uh, with the logistics, we also have an increasing number of students for remote students. And the need to uh, to make help available and to make remote communities is, is even greater in, in the northern parts of the country. This is something we hope can uh, work and increase the community and reduce uh, dropout rates and reduce failure rates. Thank you. So I saw Svetlana from Jose. Yes, I'm uh, Svetlana Tomičková from uh, University of West Bohemia. Uh, we established uh, the support center at uh, the Faculty of Applied Sciences, but we uh, support students of all universities. But I think that it is all from of me. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's one interesting thing you mentioned last time that uh, what is the form, how you provide the support to the students? I think you mentioned uh, that you provide the online support. Yes, we we uh, after the COVID period we we uh, uh, use Discord to to support our students, but uh, they can they also can uh, uh, communicate uh, by other other means. Other means, but uh, the the mean. Uh, Support the canal is uh, the Discord for us, and mm -hmm. students and students um, communicate and uh, also uh, write uh, to other tutors uh, when they can uh, meet and uh, or also they can meet uh, peer to peer, to face to face. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I have noticed there is also uh, Pavlina Rajkova, but uh, I don't know whether it is uh, possible. Do you have a mic there, microphone? 
I'm very yeah. sorry. Uh, uh, I'm here, but uh, I, uh, uh, I, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I'm very light, uh, lazy, uh, lazy. <laughs> sorry. I'm uh, very busy. Uh, so I, I'm from University of uh, Defense, and uh, we have no support center uh, nowadays. But uh, we supported our students uh, during extra exercises, uh, which uh, are ma mandatory for them. And um, I think that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, experience with uh, these uh, lessons. So um, we prefer um, teach or uh, communicate with them um, uh, one to one. But, uh, to see him, it's uh, for uh, better for us. Uh, we uh, have some uh, online lessons, uh, for example, during uh, the, the evening uh, when the students uh, are on their um, uh, uh, on their acc uh, accommodation, and uh, then um, then they have uh, more time because uh, our students are so are soldiers and uh, they have uh, some uh, extra exercises, uh, soldiers exercises, and uh, they are so busy uh, during a whole day from uh, seven to uh, to uh, seven a.m. to seven p.m. and it's uh, very terrible uh, to uh, to catch them uh, for uh, for uh, another uh, lesson. So, so we have uh, twice a week uh, the students from the first uh, first year, and uh, extra lessons uh, when they wanted to to visit us um, online. That's, that's all. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much for uh, uh, the information about uh, your form of support. Although you say that you don't have support center, but you still provide the support to students, which is evident. And uh, so it it is visible that there is a variety of institutions uh, and colleagues who provide uh, various forms of support and uh, therefore can uh, also share experience with this. And uh, that's why we uh, thought about uh, um, establishing a community or a network. Uh, that's why we started to talk about it. And now uh, uh, our, uh, our next step uh, is to collect ideas, to reflect about uh, what everything is it good for. And uh, we had a great inspiration from the presentation of uh, Tony Croft. And we can also think about the uh, things which are specific to our universities, um, countries or um, faculties, uh, environments which have not been mentioned there. So we can we can also think about these uh, special conditions that we have and that would be uh, useful to share throughout the network. So uh, there is the document on the shared Google Drive. Uh, I hope that uh, all of you managed to uh, to have access to get access to it. Uh, I would like to ask you to have a look and uh, reflect and uh, write down your uh, comments and suggestions. Uh, for what can we do next? Because uh, the uh, thing which is well, reality is that we are uh, working in academia and have our academic duties and so on. So uh, the question is, um, our, our idea is to be realistic about what we can do, how we can engage. And I think that we have seen uh, some uh, uh, very inspirational ideas, what we can do or what we can set up, which uh, probably would not need uh, much uh, effort. 
And uh, there, of course, we have seen uh, some um, some things or uh, activities that need some effort. So it, it would be good to, to know your opinion or suggestion what we can do, practically do, what we can engage in so that it doesn't take enormous amount of time and energy, but still can keep uh, the community going. Yes, this is one of the ideas how we can proceed. But feel free to, to uh, throw in further ideas. Uh, for example, if there is a training of new tutors at one institution, we can let uh, others know if there are free places uh, to join also from others. Yes. By the way, uh, are there any plans of uh, tutor trainings for uh, this year, 2023, when we are all here? From our side, uh, it depends on uh, uh, how many students we will recruit uh, in September, so we cannot say. We, we usually don't do this because uh, if it's just one person or two, then we communicate like uh, face to face, not in a group. OK, Honza wanted to uh, comment. Yeah, I, um, I think that even even in the case when there would be a small amount of students in at one university, it would be very helpful to form a group where mm -hmm where we can share the experience from various types of support uh, and uh, and make a make, make a joint uh, joint tutor training. However, we uh, uh, we work with the students uh, also. Uh, well, we, we are used to uh, work with the students uh, First, in the introductory form, in some, have some introductory uh, training, not not a course, uh, but the, but then we all we we work uh, work with the student tutors uh, nearly well. Uh, with every new student tutor, we we work the first semester in. Uh, uh, what we call in tandem, we we have uh, joint consultations of one student tutor and and one one uh, more experienced tutor. So so we don't uh, um, we don't throw them into the water very quickly. Um, OK, so uh, if I understand it correctly, are you suggesting that uh, we might uh, like to uh, set up um, an online training package. <clears throat> well, uh, on online training package might be might be a solution. Yes, uh, the uh, the other possibility would be that we. Uh, um, we keep touch and uh, at keep keep us informed how how we plan to do the tutor training in September or October and to meet in person in and that will be definitely possible in Ostrava if uh, and uh, uh, if if it helps uh, I can offer a space in 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 our support center or I can come with my students uh, elsewhere. OK, so then uh, uh, it means that uh, it could be um, on campus training. Uh, would uh, we think about um, a hybrid extension like the session we have now? Yeah, sounds good. OK, yeah. uh, definitely it would it it would be very useful to give give the students some work uh, some pre-seminar work that 
that they should do before before the meeting. We are we we are, we, we are used to uh, point them uh, to to some materials of Sigma network or or uh, um, something like this. Yeah. In the in the pre sessional work, you in, you might mm -hmm. you hear me? Am I, am I being heard? Yeah. yeah. You, you might you might want to send them some potential scenarios mm -hmm. and just ask them to think about. There's no right or wrong answer. Just to think about how they would deal with a particular situation if they were faced with it in the support centre, and that can then provide a basis for discussion in the training session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That, that was precisely what I wanted to say. Thank you. Tony, okay. I was yeah. also sorry. I was also thinking about um, the the data base. So this, this thing, this is a mic. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <coughs> so uh, I was uh, just uh, thinking that um, this. Um, uh, data collection uh, with the specific examples and uh, problems and solutions to that. Uh, we could use it as a, as a member of the network, for example, or could we also contribute to that? Or how can we uh, organize some kind of collaboration on that? Because uh, I think every university has uh, their specific uh, uh, mathematical problem, especially for the first year students, uh, we could, uh, yeah, maybe we could work somehow on that as well. Sorry, do you, are you do you, are you talking about the potential scenarios? Yes, yes. yes. To share those. Yeah. Yes, I mean, that, that would be really useful to share. So, because uh, I know that usually, you know, you would use uh, maybe the similar textbook, but sometimes they do not fit. So maybe we could discuss uh, some kind of uh, uh, teaching materials, which would be useful also for the for the support centers. Maybe we could have some kind of collaboration in that. <clears throat> yeah, um, one of the ideas that might uh, be um, not difficult to implement is to create uh, the automatic mailing list as uh, similar to the Sigma network has. The, the thing is that uh, there is an, an email address and when an email is sent to this address, it automatically forwards the mail to all the addresses on the mailing list and uh, maintenance of the mailing list is done automatically i think through the what is the name of the server it's in in, in the uk it's called a, G, a gisk mail gisk mail and i yeah. don't know whether you have something equivalent yeah so uh, we can try to find a check equivalent of this i think there used to be something like that like list serve I'm not sure whether this service is uh, still available or not, but if not, I uh, suspect that it uh, should be possible in principle to use the GISC mail. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, is it an international server service? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I have a question from another field, and I think the question is is aimed uh, at uh, Jan and maybe Svetlana in Kazan. Uh, what do you think about possible 
cooperation, collaboration with uh, jednota českých matematiků a fyziků. Would that be possible in a way, or is it uh, better not to look that way, that direction, because it would be somehow uh, difficult? Or if we have completely different uh, like aims, um, then it wouldn't make sense. But in a sense, I still feel that we are working at the same place at that network. Well, if I may answer, uh, in Ostrava there is a branch of uh, of the Union of the Jednota uh, Union of the Czech Mathematicians and Physicists, and uh, uh, I can imagine that there will be a collaboration. Uh, uh with the with the union in general uh however uh i see that the representatives of the branch are not especially positively inclined to support the support centers uh our local boss of the of the branch uh, is aware of of the support center. However, uh, he visited the support center once in the seven years, and uh, uh, af uh, after several attempts attempts to to invite them for collaboration, uh, I gave up. So you have uh, tried, didn't work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank but you. But well, uh, it might be that in I don't know five years there will be another boss in the branch and another people in the branch who would be more more inclined to collaborate. However, uh, are you aware about uh, Suma? Uh, yes, it's a part. Uh, of yeah, this is a, this is, this is something like special interest group within the union of the Czech mathematician physicist. It is the Společnost učitelů nebo spolek spolek učitelů matematiky. And but uh, I don't uh, I I can imagine that it might be uh, more more interesting for for this group as for the whole union of Czech mathematicians and physicists. Svetlana, do you want to add something? Do you have your own experience? I, I don't know about uh, about cooperation, but I think that uh, it can be. I maybe we can uh, discuss about it uh, with uh, with Předsedkyně Šolcová, and then mm -hmm. can discuss the, discuss. Uh, about co cooperation, about cooperation. Maybe and I can, I can, uh, I can try to discuss uh, with her. If, if uh, you want, I, I, I can ask her. Uh, if I have, might have a question, uh, what, what form of co cooperation or collaboration uh, do you have some? Particular form of cooperation in mind, or was it, was it more, more general question? It was rather general, and I don't think it's right time to ask somebody from there if they want to cooperate or collaborate. But you know, uh, those people with initiative usually uh, work together, or the, they look for each other, and I think. Personally, that in that uh, union, in the Diednota, many people are enthusiastic, but not all of them. So when I look around to see people who work uh, with passion for something, and uh, especially for passion for education in mathematics, I would search there. But uh, maybe our uh, 
our goals and aims uh, do not fit with their. So I just wanted to mm. ask you for for your uh, like, what do you think about it? I don't think it's a good idea, but my, maybe it could be. Well, my, exper my experience is that uh, the people in union are are more interested in in mathematics than in teaching to non-mathematicians and teaching mathematics to non-mathematicians is uh, is uh, for them it is a low uh, low aim level of work. So so uh this is my interpretation of why why this doesn't sound great to to the people from the union okay thank you i don't know but uh, i i think that we uh, we can try to uh, discuss with with not not a uh, big cooperation but uh, know uh, about each uh, each us uh, jako aby jsme si zájemně o sobě věděli ano jak to říct mm -hmm. úplně správně mm -hmm. anglicky yeah. ale prostě abychom o sobě věděli a abychom se zájemně třeba podpořili někdy ta podpora jakoby mohla z té jednoty být nějaká rozumná, jo? To jako nedokážu úplně, já si myslím, že to nemáme vylučovat, jako jedná se o matematiku jako celek, takže takže takhle, no. A nedokáže to říct dobře anglicky, to co říct. Takže já myslím, že prostě zkusit se třeba bavit na tom ústředí, zkusit se bavit s, ať už s předsedkyní, nebo s, jako s předsednictvem, o tom, co by si o tom mysleli, o spolupráci a, a potom z toho něco vyhodit, jestli jo nebo ne, ale prostě aspoň se začít o tom bavit. Well, I think, I think there, will be, uh, there will be topics which might sound very interesting to the people in the union. Uh, but if we want to start to chat with them and uh, say them what what we are aiming at, we should be pretty clear what they want to hear yeah. and what they want to cooperate on. Okay, if I if it is understandable. Yes. Yeah. That is pretty understandable, and that uh, brings us to the um, yeah to the questions from the beginning. Uh, what uh, would be uh, are the goals of such a community or the purpose? So mm -hmm. before we came to this meeting, I tried to reflect about the purposes for such uh, organization or a commun community at least to start with. And uh, there are some mentioned in the document that, uh, that uh, is shared on the Google Drive. And uh, in, in particular, uh, I was uh, pleased to see uh, in the present Tony's presentation that uh, the, the, um, the ideas that I was re reflecting about are not uh, completely uh, out of the business because uh, I was thinking mm -hmm. about uh, the community uh, as also as a resource for people to to seek uh, uh, inspiration or ideas and also support because uh, mm, I will again mention the presentation that we saw last week at the conference in Hradec uh, that was given by Duncan Lawson and uh, a particular thing that uh, touched my heart was that uh, Many people who provide the mathematics or statistics support at universities uh, can be isolated. Mm. Uh, what they do and can feel or can feel isolated. And I think that uh, the uh, benefit of such a community would be that uh, such people who can feel isolated or lonely have a space or a platform 
uh, to share uh, this with others and uh, seek support from the community. And uh, I think that this uh, can uh, can be started or we can start with uh, creating the mailing list, the automated one, so that uh, when uh, uh, some of the um, community members uh, want to share anything with others, just uh, sends a question uh, to um, yeah, do that email address and uh, receives responses. And as uh, Tony mentioned, they can come in a couple of minutes or a couple of hours. But definitely, the, at, at, at least that's my experience from Sigma Network, they always comes a response. If we are five in the network, it does not need to be true. Well, uh, so far in the, the mailing list that uh, we collected uh, at the meeting in Brno, uh, we had about uh, 12 or 15 people at least, I think, so to start with. And uh, as far as I understand, uh, the GISC mail, mail lists, they are, um, how to say, like self-maintained. So you can add yourself to the, to the list, but you can also remove yourself from the list. So it is not uh, necessary that an admin needs to add uh, people who want to be the part of the mail list. Is that correct? I, I don't know because I didn't set it. I didn't set it up. But I, I, I think you're right. But I don't. I can't yeah. speak authoritatively. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you, you probably try to sign up. Oh yeah, I, you, I've signed up many, many years ago. I can't. Yeah. Remember what's so you, yeah. So you don't remember. But I think I didn't have to ask anyone to join yeah, the yeah. list. That I just uh, filled in and uh, that was it. Yeah, OK. It would also be interesting to uh, to see uh, reflections in the document from our colleagues uh, from Norway. Although uh, there is a uh, less support centers as far as we know because there also are less universities so it makes sense but uh, still it would be nice to uh, to see or to hear what you think about uh, such kind of community uh, or network yeah but uh, i think uh, we first we need to identify the areas where we can collaborate because send an email about what that's the question. Yeah, uh, that is a, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, can uh, we can uh, raise this question? Who has the experience with uh, Sigma network mail lists here? <laughs> okay. So that's uh, um, that, yeah. A few people here. Um, so that's uh, one of the suggestions that I can um, make is uh, let's try the Sigma network mail list if you are interested, because uh, then everything comes in English. And as we work in English, uh, it, it, it should be like uh, accessible to us. And uh, you can see, uh, try to see what's going on there and how they work. As uh, Tony showed us, example or two examples, right? Mm -hmm. I think, but there can be many more. So you can see for yourself uh, how it works and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what is it, whether it is. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I just wanted to say something comment on that because uh, I'm a little bit reluctant to to you know join the mailing list usually because then you're mailbox is you know, full with a lot of mails which you may not be interested in at all and so that's that's the problem because the examples that uh, Tony presented here for some they may be really relevant but for some they are not relevant at all so if you keep getting all those emails with some you just don't read them so that's something that I really suggest to identify what would be interested, interesting for every one of us and then just. Yeah. Well, I, I suggest the opposite. Mm -hmm. Those who are interested, 
can join the mail list. Yeah, of course. Uh, whether it is it makes sense to take part in such a uh, community. I mean, Taurus, you say you use it every day. Do you oh, find I it? see it every day, but, but uh, if they go in a certain, certain folder yes. in my And mail then you folder. can ignore them. So I can ignore them. And if I see it's the title, but oh, this is interesting, I, I will follow. Uh, otherwise, it just stays in that folder and I don't look at it. It's okay. kind of totally should be. Which, which might not be uh, might not be realized, but if say there is someone like a moderator for a community who reads all those mails from different and then just selects the most important information. Be <laughs> no, not me, not me, but because indeed you, you need to somehow sort out what you think is interesting for people around. But of course it, yeah, it's a you have to be your own moderator. Yeah. 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 That's the only yeah. 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 I think that that's how the Sigma uh, mail list works. That uh, people just manage uh, their uh, mailboxes, and uh, yeah. if they uh, feel they have something relevant to say, or they need to ask, they do it. If they don't, they don't. There are some interesting ideas, I and mean, especially announcements. Yeah, like, sure. Like Talmud and some other things, which can be interesting because otherwise we need we know about it or we can get it. Now and then I receive mails from Talmo and they are not that frequent, and they usually announce uh, like there will be some yeah. uh, talk, and that is really a lot of information in the short mail. And then if you're interested in learning more, then you can explore. But uh, s some networks, they really spread a lot of uh, messages and, uh, yeah. I think the messages in, in the segment, they are quite relevant, mm -hmm. but uh, some discussions can be very crowded. Yeah. You know? But then you just you look at the title and you skip. I skip and it's not great in this. But you have to. You have to do some work in moderating mm -hmm. this research. Mm -hmm. well, I can try and then unsubscribe. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. That, that's, uh, yeah. That. But the mailing list for this group would be much uh, less cluttered, I think. So it would be so many mails. Yeah, I, I, I think. A smaller group is. Uh, a smaller group, but also the issues that are going to be discussed could be more relevant than yeah. those general ones. Uh, because, uh, yeah, that's kind of individual wish whether you want to join the bigger network or not, because it's already established and it exists. But uh, if we're talking about establishing something, uh, some network for our uh, joint collaboration, then it's something different. Mm. But, uh, so these are two different things. What I understood from the research was, was that we could try the Sigma network just to see how it works. Mm -hmm. And then we can decide to make our own, see if it's interesting. Mm -hmm. That was what your point was. Yes. Yeah. We shouldn't join the Sigma network, but it's going to do too much. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if uh, there are other suggestions, please uh, put them into the document that we set up so that uh, we can have a look at it. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are close uh, to the end of this session. So I would like to uh, once again thank to uh, Tony Croft who uh, kindly presented uh, and shared uh, the experience uh, from Sigma Network, Sigma Network and uh, his own experience. Yes. <laughs> and thank you everybody for contributing to this discussion. I think that uh, we have some concrete suggestions and steps that we can try for, of course, it's uh, a community of practice. So uh, those who don't feel uh, as uh, say practice practitioners or don't uh, want to be a part of the community, they don't have 
uh, they don't need to. Uh, for those who would like, please think about what you would like, uh, what what uh, could such um, community bring to you, to yourself, to your benefit, and uh, write about it into the document. Uh, I think that uh, we can take a couple of days to reflect, like uh, two or three days, and then uh, let's have a look what uh, what is there, what is the content, and then uh, we can continue uh, working like uh, we did now. It's so it means that uh, probably I will uh, prepare a brief summary or just uh, do uh, an announcement and we'll see how we can continue further. Is that OK? OK, so thank you very much, everybody, again, and uh, thank uh, Thank to you who joined us remotely for, for your time and contribution. Uh, we will be happy to see you next time uh, face to face. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, for us who are here, uh, it's about the coffee break time. Yes. So thank you very much once again, and uh, I hope to see you soon again. Enjoy the coffee. Mějte se. Ahoj. Mějte se. Ahoj. Ahoj.